Look how beautiful. I can't explain. I'm gonna take like six or seven pictures. I'm gonna show you how beautiful this place is. So this is, <clears throat> if I go back in here and I go towards the highway again, back towards the highway by about a mile, that's where my property is. I don't know why someone's marking this. Probably so they can find their crab line or catfish line or something. I don't know. River, get down. Get down. Stay down. I'm going to let you off in a second. Anyways, you come back around here you make a full 180 degree turn. And you go back down into the swamp back here. And that's the hill that is on my, in my backyard. And yeah, look at their marking all the way back here. Yeah, there, there's there's their line right there. And then, so you just go up and over one hill, and then that's my backyard. Now I don't know, but I ever have a need to do that because of the marina is so convenient. But I can if I need to. I mean, technically, I mean, really, I could just park the, I could beach the houseboat somewhere along here and just go back and forth to the house um, but your car your truck wouldn't be safe you'd save yourself $90 not to use a bathroom not to use an outlet or any of the stuff at the marina or have a place to hide from storms for 90 bucks that's not worth it I'd rather have the dock I'd rather have the dock so this is the road right behind my property that brings you down to the boat launches. This entire hill is Tennessee Nature Preserve, Wildlife Refuge. And then it goes down and there's a valley that's still Wildlife Refuge and then it goes up and starts to be my, my hill. So. On this hill, when it goes away from the highway that way, there'll start to be houses in my backyard, but that's not in the nature preserve. Or it is, and the people owned it before the preserve was made. Everything loaded for the first go around. <clears throat> the only stuff I'm leaving here are some 
boards that I'm going to use for fence boards and some stuff, stuff some foam. I got the whole back stacked with wood and I got a lot of the front stacked with wood. My boat can carry 6,000 pounds in, in total. I believe that the wood, the, the stuff that's in there, including the motor and the stuff is about 2,000. So I can put an additional 4,000 on it without affecting how it drives. My pickup truck can only put 1,700 pounds in the back of it. Um, or 1,600 pounds in the back of it. So I feel like this wood is... We'll see how the truck is sitting, but I feel like half of the... It may take two trips. We'll see. We shall see. But we're going back to the marina. It's been a long time here. It's a beautiful island. I will be back. There's more wood here. I will grab more on another trip, probably next weekend. All right, well, with me on the back of the boat, the boat's floating off the island, so the weight doesn't matter to it as far as being stuck on the island. Yeah, look at that. Just grabbed the lifeboat. It's coming with us. All right, I'll check back you up with you guys at the marina. While I'm loading this wood and getting the truck loaded, I uh, got a call from my buddy. They're gonna have a little get together tonight and do a shrimp boil. Now I normally don't, I haven't had a shrimp boil, I don't think in my life. So this is kind of a new experience for me. A lot of this stuff down south is a new experience for me. So I wanted to show you guys at least a little bit of it and us getting, hanging, hanging out and getting drunk. What are you two doing? What are you two doing? Lucy! The good girl. Couple of Australians over here. <laughs> no, my dog ain't gonna have the puppies. His dog's gonna have the puppies. Somebody, he's gonna come up and be like, dude, why do my dog's puppies look just like your dog? <laughs> I'm not putting that damn dog porn on my puppies. That's my dog. <laughs> this oh, my damn dog. Look at that much <laughs> next to this fucking. Man, he'll make a hundred thousand dollars off his dog on his puppies. I'm gonna say his ass. Man, let's kill it. You don't lose me. He's being very gentle with her. He's very much in love. <laughs> she she fell in love pretty quick, dude. Remember? He, oh! See, he's not playing around, dude. <laughs> He's not playing around. I'm telling you. You gotta come home with somebody. <laughs> I bought this truck to, uh, I man, I don't wanna say that I bought it to beat it up, but if you ask my friends, I said I'm gonna go buy a pickup truck that I'm gonna drag across the United States completely fully loaded with an RV. Uh, and I'm going to overload it and I'm going to drive it off-road to basically beat it up. So I'm not buying a truck to look pretty. And if you look real close at it, there are scratch marks all over it because I have driven on trails between trees that scratch it the whole way. Um, having said that, the only things I've ever done to it are the cabin filter for the air conditioner twice, which I think is a lot for 100,000 miles, but whatever. Uh, new tires once and brakes on the front and that's it. The backs have been re-looked at and that cost me some money, but they just adjusted everything. They didn't have to do anything to them. Um, having said that, I have to have the truck towed. There is something going wrong with the back differential where it's catching. I 
don't know if it's sticking in four-wheel drive and or if there's something broke inside one of those shafts. What I did myself was, you know, I'd hate to tow it 51 miles, chase someone to do that if it wasn't necessary. So I took off the tires, looked at the brakes, pulled off the hubs, spun everything, and it's actually not, has nothing to do with the brakes or anything like that. It's actually inside the differential or along the shaft to the differential. Um, and it's catching whether it's in neutral or whether it's in four-wheel drive or in drive. So even if I'm going down a hill, it's still going cocoon, cocoon, cocoon. Um, and it's not just a noise. Like, you actually physically hear it, feel it, you know. It stops the truck a little bit. So, I can't take the drive shaft off and drive it in front-wheel drive to get there I have to actually hire a tow truck so that's gonna come then I'm gonna go with the tow truck and get a rent a car I mean part of me says don't go get a rent a car just stay here on the houseboat but for my buddy to drive me to go pick up this truck it's two hours it's like you know more than an hour to get there yeah so it's a lot of time to ask someone to give you a ride and stuff so we'll see I'll think about that over the next The other thing, River broke the windshield when we were here last time. A chihuahua, a lady with a chihuahua walked by the front while she was holding it in her arms. And River does not like little dogs. And he smashed his head right there and cracked the windshield. You can't even see the crack, but I'm, I'm going to have to get that done. And then two days ago, or three days ago, I hit a really bad pothole at like 75 miles an hour and cracked this window. Cracked right here. So, I'm gonna be spending a thousand bucks on glass is what it looks like. Um, but I'm gonna figure that out. If I can get a used window, I'll do that. Back here, we'll see. So there's these little gaps in the frame where you can hook up the chain to tow it and then it's four different points in the frame and he was looking for him that's pretty cool <laughs> there you go So I talked to the mechanic, um, I went to the dealership, I always go to a dealership unless I'm just getting an oil change or something, and I essentially, I got bad news about the truck, uh, the differential's blown, and I asked, you know, how the heck does something like that happen? Well, first off, when he told me the number is going to cost to fix it, I was like, this place is ripping me off, there's no way it costs that much money to get, I could buy a new axle for half that. And then I got off the phone with them and I started calling around, going online, and they had, for what they were doing and that they were going to warranty it, a lifetime warranty with it, uh, they were asking a decent price for it. And then I asked not only them, but two other mechanics how something like this would happen if I was doing something wrong with the truck. And essentially the only time this really happens with this type of truck uh, it doesn't happen with people who regularly use a Toyota, even if you off-road every once in a while. 
what happens is if you off-road on a regular basis meaning every single day you're putting your drive your car into four-wheel drive or four-wheel high and you're going back and forth to get yourself out of mud mud trucks where people go mudding and they go off-roading they'll blow a differential you know every couple of months so yeah and then or they'll have a higher level differential to do that kind of stuff with if you're actually going to be off-road all the time so essentially I've been wearing away at this and I I felt something wrong with the with the differential like wobbling a little bit four or five months ago I thought it was mud stuck in the tires so I didn't even think about it um, but needless to say if you're gonna do that the goal what you should do is get your differential and your transmission flushed and changed every 60 thousand miles instead of hundred thousand miles so I'll start doing that um, four hundred and four thousand four hundred dollars is what it's going to cost me to get that truck back on the road. Uh, yeah, apparently that's a legitimate number for what I'm doing if I want the truck to be back to being a hundred percent. So we're going to go ahead and stick with it. I'm stuck on this island for a week. I've had my buddy run me to the store and then another buddy run me to get diesel. So I have supplies for the next week. I am. Just relaxing. Like the last couple of days, I've just been relaxing and hanging out. I haven't been looking for wood or doing anything. But next week, I'm going to start looking for wood. I want to do a little better job. I'm going to get in the dinghy and start actually going to some of the places where I see stuff from the waterway. And I'm going to get off on shore and actually use my chainsaw and cut it up and start collecting it. So we'll get back onto that and get started on the tiny house. So it's 6.30, the sky doesn't have a cloud in it um, over here, and it's bright. So the sun is coming up, it's gonna come up right through those trees right here, but it's bright out already and we can't even see the sun yet, so. Cold morning, a little bit, little bit past 32 degrees, beautiful morning. I went to two other beaches. The water is really low, as you can see, we've gained. Uh, if you watched my last video, the log that we were showing is actually 10, 20 feet up on the water right there, and it was in the water last time. So I went to a couple of spots, and essentially I got off to anchor, and it was just mud. I could barely walk. So we are back on this island. This island is perfect for spring mud because it's covered in foliage and you know you only have to go two or three feet to get to it so we don't have the dog bringing mud in and it's beautiful perfect i'm gonna look for more spots like this and here it comes up it's gonna get to be 65 degrees today and then tomorrow or tonight it's only gonna be 47 degrees so i'm gonna turn off my heater this morning and leave it off all 48 hours it's gonna be great so half of that log was underwater. <laughs> Here, half of that log was underwater um, in the last video. And if you look real, you can see there's only about three feet of mud that we got to deal with, and I'm able to just walk on one of the foam to get over it. So it's pretty cool. Pretty cool island. Very good island for low water and rainy days, spring weather where it's muddy and yeah. I don't know why they get go out so early. It's so cold out there right now, but man, they get out early. The sun is just peeking over the tree line. Good morning. The sun's up. What do you think? Is it going to be a good day? Oh, okay. I'll pick you up. <laughs> Goof off. It's 
hard to show how loud they are. You can feel a barge coming for about 10 minutes before it comes. You can feel it in your chest. There's a very low roar. roar. And it's, you can feel it in the boat. You can feel it on the table on the boat. You can feel it in your chest. The dog knows it's coming way before I know it. And then look at how my little... There's a little underwater island that you can just barely get a glimpse of. And if you watch during my winter shows, you can, it's all, I've driven out there with the truck. Um, and it blocks all the water coming in here. No, so no waves really make it in here. It's really awesome. And let's say that ends up being two feet underwater. A wave can only be a certain portion of the depth. So you're never gonna get big waves in here. You know, it's never gonna become a bigger wave after it goes over that underwater island. Are you going for a boat ride? We can go for a boat ride. Actually sounds like an awesome idea right now. Can you see how low the water is? That was floating the last time I took pictures back here. So we lost, you know, more than three feet of depth. Significant. Probably not gonna be able to get back in here anymore. I was gonna take river over there, but it's just gonna be all money. We'll see. We'll try, bud. He's a good dog. I bet he'll actually swim today because it's warm and all. I wonder how deep it is here. No, I'm not touching bottom. So it's a uh, gust of 30 mile an hour. Yeah, you can't hear me with the wind like that outside. People on the beach are looking for Indian head, uh, Indian arrowheads. Yeah, that's what a lot of people do. It's a very big hobby around here. One of my friends, I hate to say, like, I know the person who has the best Indian head collection, but Indian arrowhead collection, but I do. I, I know the person who has the best. But that's what they're doing here. It's kind of cool. Now, this is just one wall. And I have seen five other walls that are just like this in this house. The arrowheads that are not perfect, he uses outside to do landscaping in the yard. And he has thousands just laying outside in the yard as well. These are all the ones that are just perfect.